All right, now we're ready to install the uh, camshaft. Um, we're going to install it with these two lobes, one of the exhaust and the intake lobes, pointing down. That way it'll be at the end of its compression stroke. And also, with the lobes down, it'll be easier to get it in because it won't interfere with the, um, with the tappets or the rocker arms, whatever they are. Okay, so before we do that, it wouldn't hurt to put a little oil on them. On these bearings, the front of the there's two bearings here, one here and one here, and it'll go through the uh, the um, sprocket. And you can reach around the back and guide it with your finger. Probably pull it out again when, when, while we're adjusting the valves, which is the next step. We adjust the valve timing, the t timing relationship to the opening and closing of the valves and the piston going up and down. Um, you don't want the valve open while the piston is is coming up, or you know we'll have some real big problems. So we're going to need to find the timing mark. There is a timing mark. Um, I showed it to you earlier. It was on the um, the cam gear, and it's a little O right next to the uh, the hole, the uh, bolt hole. It's between the bolt hole and the uh, sprocket tooth the teeth. Right. There's also a timing mark. It's inside the in the top of the head. It's like a V-shaped slot. Okay, there. That's a timing mark on the valves. Now there's another timing mark for the piston when it's at top dead center. And that's the one I had a heck of a time finding. I looked all over the documentation. It seemed like they were trying to tell us there's a hole, a hole in the, on the top here, an inspection hole. But that turns out that's for the newer ATC 110s. And to to get to the uh, F and T marks here, for the timing marks, you need to take the starter off. And under that starter, there's a starter cage, and then you'll see the marks. Okay, to get the starter. To get the starter off, there's three bolts. There's one here, one here, and there's one here right in the bottom, which we can't see from this angle. So we'll take those off, and then it'll expose the next part that needs to be taken off. Okay, I removed the three bolts. And now we can take the starter off. It just clears the gear shift lever, so there's no need to take that off. I see under this starter, there's this basket with three bolts in it, 10 millimeter bolts. You'll take the, that off, and that'll expose the timing marks. Um, if you need to hold it, there's a 14 millimeter bolt in the middle. You can use that to, to hold it. Get the piston to the top dead center, you look on the magneto rotor for the F and T mark, and next to the T mark you'll see a little line. So you want to line up that line with this little tiny line in the um, on the stator, and the engine will be at top dead center at this point. And if you want to double check it, you can take a little screwdriver and put it into the uh, spark plug hole and it'll touch the top of the piston and then you can move it back and forth and you'll have no doubt you'll be able to feel it. So that'll be a double check. You're at top dead center. Okay. Once you're at top dead center then you want to line up the um, O that's on the uh, cam sprocket with a little V-shaped notch that's um, inside the circle here at the top of the head.
If it's lined up, you're fine. You're time, then you're done. If not, you need to pull the cam back out again and um, rotate the uh, cam chain one direction or another, you know, for as many teeth as you need to to move it, and then put it back together again and then recheck. Once you have that done, you can. Um, tighten up the, uh, the two bolts in here, tighten them up and torque them down. The uh, torque is um, seven to nine foot pounds. Okay, now we're ready to set the valve clearance. Um, the first thing you do is you'll loosen up this nut here. It's a locking nut, it's nine millimeters and you adjust it by turning the um, square um, adjusting screw down to where it almost touches the valve. You check it with a feeler gauge. It's set at seven hundredths of a millimeter or three thousandths of an inch, which is really thin like a piece of paper. So um, this one's off right now. I'm just, this is just to show you. So when you when you set it in there, the feeler gauge will go in, you know, underneath there, and there'll be maybe a little tiny bit of drag, but it will go in. After you tighten up the lock nut, you want to recheck it because sometimes just tightening a lock nut will will turn it down a little bit, and it'll just barely barely click if you you know if you go to click them, and you can listen to the noise because you can set them pretty close by just knowing how it's supposed to sound. Um, th this is the exhaust valve. You're going to do the same thing on the other end of the engine for the uh, intake valve. And we can put this cover back on now too. They put a gasket, new gasket in the cover because we won't need to have access to this part anymore.